Good morning, folks. We've got SDO rolls for cooling and calibration on the solar images today. We'll hit almost all our top fields of coverage here, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. The sun is currently dominated by the coronal hole setup. The active regions are lessened the last few weeks as plasma filaments take their turn preparing for the upcoming sunspot maximum. We continue to see the increased filament size and activity like this one incoming over the northeastern limb into view. We also continue to see the coronal field expansions, which will be leading to stealth CME eruptions once the cycle gets a bit more active. Arches like this will pinch and release with a bit more juice. We had a brief and minor geomagnetic storm yesterday. Minor solar wind enhancement couldn't even crack 600 kilometers per second, but it did drive a few hours of geomagnetic instability. I know tornado warnings were flying as day turned to night, but any major damage reports are still to come in. My hope is that they don't, and everyone got lucky, which was needed as the system turned on the lights as it was dropping those tornado signatures all around the storm system. Moving into the Atlantic states today. Let's begin the science stories with the intermediate cosmic spheres, something between a massive planet and a failed star, the brown dwarfs. Here, the new discovery may be shedding light on exactly how fast these things can rotate, including one, 43 times the size of Jupiter and rotating in only about one hour. They believe that the more massive the dwarf is, the faster it should spin, and that the speed limit is into the hundreds of thousands of miles per hour, taking well less than an hour to rotate. They also note the flattening from perfect sphere shape should also increase as mass and rotation speed increases as compared to Jupiter and Saturn. I can't mince words here. Universities were blinded by China's cash and their well-written lies, and just like that, good men and women blinked. Now, dependent on the sustained and ever-increasing cash flow to their universities, they find themselves looking for ways to scrape it around every edge of the law. Under the guise of racial profiling fears, amidst mostly leftist intellectuals, by the way, they want clearer rules on just how odiferous their deuces can be before the flies come buzzing around. Hashtag clown world. And on to clown science, or rather, correcting it. Climate articles today start with the methane oops. The oceanic conservation targets supposedly at risk from climate change are actually causing unfathomably more of the methane release than they realized, slicing back the human influence to remarkable degrees there. Now before the other climate articles, remember yesterday's top story about the thousandth confirmation that Earth's magnetic field drives rotational glitches of the Earth and the polar offset. It was part of the EGU upcoming online meeting and I said it was worth the price of admission alone but it's not the only one. Back to the climate stories here as they are driving forward full speed on the particle precipitation and atmospheric ionization modeling during solar storms. This is where modern climate science has one of its biggest failures. And as if we needed another reason to investigate such models, we've got yet another confirmation of the energetic particle effect on the polar vortex, sudden stratospheric warmings, and ozone. For a couple days here, we'll be sharing our favorite picks from this upcoming online event. Okay, just one more before we leave there, as they believe they have discovered a paleo-intensity harmonic at 5,300 years. When they use those isotopes that we've shown of major problems and are always subject to adjustment, we still look for the identification of a cycle, but give them a 10 to 15,000 year range and a half cycle of 5,000 to 7,500 years. This one quite obviously hits that same range, and this one coming out of the Atlantic Ocean data sets. In the realm of the potential Earth weather effects, the first media tsunami driven entirely by pressure fluctuations occurred back in 2018. This occurred as the energy from a geomagnetic storm was integrating into the atmospheric system after having produced auroras in one of the strongest Steve plasma forms ever captured on film. The most harsh of the electrodynamic effects on the global electric circuit is directly on those pressure cells, and this first of its kind, destined to be blamed on global warming, I'm sure, is precisely what we should expect and expect to see much more of as time goes on with Earth's failing field. Last but not least, cosmology. The bombshell discovery of the week is directly related to the bombshell last week, and so far I've seen nobody connect the dots. The muon is more magnetic than they realized, and if that's the case, chances are it's not the only particle. Now they're using this to say it may signal more elementary particles that are unseen dark matter. This is nowhere near the ballpark of an acceptable conclusion from this magnetic evidence of the muon, especially since they need to be looking for extra magnetism after last week's bombshell that you can replace dark energy 
with unseen magnetism. And it's not just the muon, as I mentioned, as they found today. But on that same day that we reported the dark energy as magnetism story, we had also reported the unseen electrodynamic properties of tiny particles. Folks, they are so close to putting those pieces together, I can almost taste it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Learn about climate, catastrophe, and cosmology with our playlists and movies listed in the description box below the video. Also find them at suspiciousobservers.org. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.